Hi, this is James Gordon Torlai here with the second updated book review. Today's um, book I will be reviewing today, Dirty White Boys by Stephen Hunter. He's got this interesting die cut inside too. Right. Okay, this is from Dell under the um, Island Books uh, publishing name and was first published in 1994. This edition is um, December 1995. This was a decent read. Um, the first time I read this book, I, I liked it, but then when I read it a second time, I did not like it as much as the first time as I felt the first act it gets off to a really good start, but towards the second and third act is when it all goes downhill. And it does that typical cliche thing where the lawman has to win and the criminal has to lose. I, I'm really getting t kind of tired of, of that cliche. Um, I, I like, um, and one thing that bugs me when, when I read books or watch movies is uh, when, when you have like the more, I find it that the more interesting characters are the ones that always get killed off. I, I, I really hate that. Like, I, I, I like um, seeing in films and books where the more interesting character survives and wins, of course, but some offers, they gotta do that typical cliche thing where the criminal has to lose and the lawman has to win, and I really don't like like that, and I absolutely despise the, the lawman character in this book, Butte Pud Thai. I despise his character, I don't like him, and I wish Lamor was the was the one who came on top at the end, not, not Pew Thai, and there are a bunch of other things with this book I didn't like. However, uh, what it does have, it has a lot of... The first act has a lot of, like, just brutal action and um, and, and uh, a lot of shootouts. And the the, the, the beginning of the book starts... Like, it, it, when you begin reading this book, it starts off very serious. And it kind of lets you know that you're dealing with, with, with very uh, dangerous individuals uh, you come to know in this book. And... The whole opening sequence where Lamar fights a guy in a shower, it was really, that, that seems brutal. And then later on, the the shootouts they have and stuff, uh, it's, it's really good. It's just, I just wish the, the, the second and third act was a lot better. It was a lot better. Um, some might, might enjoy this book. I said I didn't recommend it, but hey, maybe you'll like it. Um, and... Um, yeah, so I'm uh, for this update review. I'm just gonna uh, reread uh, re uh, what I said about it, and then I'll just add a little more. Uh, just uh, after the review, I'll just um, say a few more things about this book. All right, onto the book review. Plot: The McAllister State Penitentiary, or the Mac in Oklahoma, which the most dangerous criminals in America are kept. Lamar Pyle is one of the worst and most feared men in the prison. A tall, heavily built man with the words "fuck you" tattooed on his knuckles, and has the biggest cock out of everyone else in the Mac. Also in the prison is his cousin Olin, a hulking giant that follows any orders given by Lamar. While he's dumb and doesn't speak well, however, what he lacks in Olin is a very strong and powerful man, able to break a person's neck like a twig. And Richard, a talented artist who murdered his mother in a fit of rage. Unlike the other two men, Richard is weak and defenseless against the other prisoners who would like to rape him for fun. To protect himself from the other criminals, Richard gains Lamar's trust by drawing him a muscular lion with a beautiful, large-breasted woman posing next to it and a castle in the background. Impressed by the drawing, Lambert and Olin will keep the other prisoners away from Richard as long as he draws whatever Lambert wants him to. Lambert is in the middle of having a shower in the guards' quarters after earning it by paying four cartons of cigarettes to Harry Flunt, allowing him to bribe the guards. However, Lambert's shower is interrupted by Junior Jefferson, a well-liked yet feared black prisoner who is a rapist and child molester. He attempts to rape Lambert, but fights back. Lambert beats Junior to a bloody pulp, bites a off a chunk of his nose, then shoves a soap bar down his throat to shut him up. When Lamar orders Junior to get up to beat him some more, he realizes Junior is dead. Knowing full well that the black inmates will order a hit on him, Lamar must escape before lockdown. He gets Richard to go find his cousin Odin while Lamar retrieves his makeshift skank. Once Richard brings back Odin, Lamar takes all three of them to Harry, the caretaker that works in the prison. Lamar has Harry able to get the three men to the medical center in the prison by fooling the guards that Lamar has information he is willing to trade with them. Odin prize open a window by breaking a chair as Lamar helps Harry tie himself up to fool the guards he was forced to help them. After gagging himself, Lamar ties up his arms and slits Harry's fro with the skank. They jump out of the window landing on top of a van. They take the driver Willard hostage as Lamar has Olin break Willard's fingers till he tells him where his company keeps their trucks along with a World War II vet that owns guns. After getting the information he wants, Lamar has Olin strangle Willard to death. 
Meanwhile, a 48-year-old highway patrolman, Russell Bud Putai, is called in the middle of the night by his boss, Captain Tim James. He tells Bud that three inmates from the MAC have escaped and is ordered to pick up rookie trooper Ted Pepper and regroup with the other tr troopers to find the three escaped convicts. Leaving his wife and two sons, Bud puts on his uniform and gears up, then goes to get Ted. Unknown to his partner or his wife, Jen, Bud is secretly having an affair with Ted's wife, Holly, as they've been going to a hotel for sex since neither of them is getting much sex from each other's partner. After getting Ted fully armed with a Mossberg shotgun and an AR-15 assault rifle, Bud drives off to the maiden shop in Chickawa. Once there, they meet several officers along with Lieutenant C.D. Henderson. He gives a briefing about the three dangerous criminals and how they will be handling the situation. After ditching the van, taking a fresh set of wheels, they drive down the long empty road till they find the Stanford's farm. Lambert has Richard go knock on the front door. When an old woman answers, Lambert strikes out of the shadows while Odlin breaks in through the back and knocks an old man out of his chair, the elderly couple Bill and Mary. Odlin smashes open a gun case in the living room since Richard was unable to open it. Both Lambert and Odlin arm themselves with shotguns. Bill refuses to tell them where he keeps his pistols. Owen breaks his arm as his wife gives in and tells Richard they are downstairs in the safe. Taking all the firearms and ammo they'll need, Lambert forces Mary to cook breakfast for them while Bill is tied up. Bud and Ted are finishing their coffee break, about to return back to patrol as the search for the three missing convicts hasn't gone well. Bud calls his wife Jen to chat with her before getting back on his ship. Jen tells him that a friend of hers swears she saw him in a motel. But lies, he wasn't there, and her friend has mistaken him for someone else. Again, states it wasn't him, then calls Holly and tells her he wants to play it safe for a while before he's ready to pay her another visit. Just as the two men are about to leave, a waitress tells Bud that Bill always shows up for coffee every morning and not once has he missed it. Bud passes off as Bill is busy with something, but the waitress insists that Bill would never miss his coffee. He's even driven through nasty winter. He's even driven through nasty winter weather to get his favorite hot drink, and she tried calling the house four times and hasn't gotten an answer. Bud agrees to drive by and see if there's anything wrong. When they go there, Richard alerts Lambert of the squad car pulling up into the driveway. Both Lambert and Owen ambush them as Ted is shot first by shotgun blast. Then Bud is hit multiple times. Taking away their guns as Bud curses a landmark, Odolin destroys the radio so they can't call for help, then steals Ted Mossberg's shotgun and his AR-15. Richard brings the Ellery couple into their Jeep Wagoneer. Lambert then executes Ted with his Colt 45 pistol, but it's empty when he goes to kill Bud. He takes Odolin's shotgun and shoots him. Bud awakens in the hospital as he survived his near-death experience. Bud lear learns the reason why the shotgun blast didn't kill him was Bill kept his buckshot hidden under his workbench as both Lambert and Odolin missed it and took his birdshot, which is less lethal against humans. While he is awarded for his bravery, along with his deceased partner Ted, however, Bud blames himself for, for, for the death of Ted as he easily led him into a trap and failed to save his partner's life. Bud attends Ted Pepper's funeral, then rests at home to fully recover from his injuries. His boss, Tim, offers Bud a new position to train young officers or work in the armory, keep him out of the cruiser. Unsure what to do, Bud pays Bill Stafford a visit after Lambert spared them when Richard failed to kill them while trying to toughen him up. During the visit, Bill tells Bud a bunch of line drawings he found and asks Bud if he would like to look at them. Meanwhile, Richard tells Lambert a place they can lay low from the law. After Richard was sentenced to prison when he murdered his mother, Ruth Tall fell in love with him after she saw news footage of him. Ruth wrote letters stating she wanted to see him when he was released from prison. She allows all three men into her house as long as they work around her barn. However, Richard isn't interested in Ruth, but Lambert takes a real liking to her as they have sex. As they are laying low, Lambert is already planning a series of robberies so they can make money. Bud visits the McAllister State Penitentiary to search through the belongings of all three criminals to see if he can find any leads since none of them haven't been spotted. Bud doesn't find anything on Lambert or Orland, but while going through Richard's belongings, he happens to find a Pentax magazine and notices that the image of the model posing has been traced. Bud wonders if this has something to do with the lion pictures he got from Bill. 
Lammer robs a Denny's restaurant in Wichita Falls, Texas, he scouted out earlier. He, Orlin, and Roof enter the building wearing raincoats and ski masks. Lammer kills a cop coming out of the men's room. An off-duty cop tries to shoot Lammer, but Richard, who sat inside to let the crew know if the coast was clear, he causes her to miss as Roof puts her down with the shotgun. Lammer forces a young manager or trainee to open the safe, then kills him. When police show up, Orlin blasts away with the AR-15, forcing the wounded officers to take cover. Lammer tells his crew to flee with the money while he holds them off, allowing them to escape. Lammer shoots his way out, killing two more cops, stealing their weapons, and takes a squad car, making a fast getaway. Bud hears about the breaking news of the robbery in Wichita Falls, drives over to see the crime scene. It is a mess with six dead and others wounded. While searching around the restaurant, he finds a doodle of a line on the table where Richard was sitting. He takes it, wondering if these lines have something to do with Lamar. Both Texas and Oklahoma police failed in their search of the criminals. This causes people along with other criminals supporting Lamar as a folk hero. This pisses Bud off. Lamar reveals to Richard why he's been making him draw lines, as he wants to get a tattoo of Richard's creation on his chest after Richard has finally pulled off his greatest line drawing ever. However, Lamar only wants the best to work on him. They go to Lake Ton, looking for a highly skilled tattoo artist to pull off Richard's creation. The gang visits Tats 2 as Richard explains to the owner, Roof, what Lamar wants. Roof states she can pull it off, but it will take a full week, which Lamar can't lake that long. So Roof tells Richard about a, a highly skilled Japanese tattoo artist, Jimmy Kun, who studied under Hiromoto, a master tattoo artist from Tokyo. They, they drive all the way to his shop, and after talking with Jimmy, he agrees to give Lamar the tattoo he wants, however, for, for a lot of money. It will take till noon to complete Richard's creation onto Lamar's chest. While Jimmy is working on Lamar's tattoo, Bud unexpectedly shows up and engages into a violent shootout. Owen is badly wounded in the shootout, and when Lamar emerges drawing out his two forty-five pistols, but is shot in the left hand, losing two fingers. Unable to see both men exchanging gunfire at each other, causing massive damage to the tattoo shop, Bud escapes to the basement when his pistol clips empty while Lamar takes Owen into Roof's car and dies. Outraged not only from having his tattoo uncomplete, but losing the only fan member he cared about, Richard draws Lamar a picture of Owen as an angel and Bud as a faceless devil. This helps him regain his focus and squares revenge on Bud Putai, hatching a plan to draw the highway trooper into a trap. While Bud is torn between his wife Jen and continuing his affair with Holly, when Lamar has his trap set up, he calls Bud as the two men will face off in a final showdown. When you begin to read this novel, the author lets you know how serious it is on page one, telling you how nasty, smart, and dangerous Landmark Pile is. Heavily detailed scenery of Oklahoma and Texas, while adding short yet intense moments of action from the opening prison shower fight to the bloody Denny's shootout had me on the edge of my seat. Landmark Pile is one of the most badass characters I ever read in a novel, as I never read a novel where, his, where he names his fists when he uses them. However, I felt Dirty White Boys could have been a lot better as it feels like a tame thriller. There are, are characters within this novel I dislike. Bud Futai is the character I hated the most. He's a lying, cheating, ugly, boring, and unlikable person who spends most of his time having sex with his partner's younger wife because he isn't getting much from his old lover. And the blind luck Bud has is unbelievable, surviving near-death experience to finding Lammer out of the blue. Unlike the well-crafted and layered character of Lambert, Bud Butai is the kind of person I can't stand wishing he would have died off earlier in the novel, and I don't like his name either. Other characters I dislike were the sex-crazed Holly, who only cares about getting on with Bud as he's the only person she's attached to this entire story. Even during the final showdown, all she wants is one man in her life not caring for the, hers. Lieutenant C.D. Harrison, a alcoholic loudmouth who claims to know everything and is always proven wrong multiple times, while trying to catch Lamar on his game, reading one scene how he caught this one killer, then going on and on how he's going to catch Lamar was annoying to read through. And lastly, the Stefford couple spending every minute trying to chew off your ear with what they did and how long they knew each other, wishing they were dead too. While this novel opens to a strong start, however, by the third and final act is when it all falls apart. In the search for Lamar, Bud visits an art gallery talking with a owner about the lions. The owner believes that with all these images Bud has found that Lamar wants to display his creation that he has Richard working on, believing it's a tattoo. However, Lamar do does his research on finding the most skilled tattoo artist to pull off Richard's creation. Bud doesn't. He always taking advice from an art gallery owner. For all Bud knows, Lamar might want Richard's creation remade into a fine painting.
And when visiting an Indian cop asking for a local tattoo shop, he gives him the address of Jimmy Cunn, where Lambert happens to be. When Bud finds the place, none of the lights are on, no open signs flashing through the window or vehicles parked in front of it. Yet, for some, yet for whatever reason, Bud just lets himself inside as he should have gone in. And during the shootout in Jimmy's tattoo shop, Bud wounds Owen, but because he can't see in the dark, he keeps on shooting a defenseless Owen as not once does Lambert's cousin even score a shot on him. Bud pumped 36 rounds senselessly into Odolin, using all three of his guns at once, acting unprofessionally. And the ending is so cliche, it took all the fun out of this novel and made it feel like your typical crime thriller. If Stephen Hunter kill of Bud Putai and focused the story more on Lambert and his gain, along with adding more action than Dirty White Boys would have been a lot better. I always find it annoying when the more interesting characters are always killed off, leaving you with the flat, plain, basic characters. I strongly felt Lambert should have been the main character in this story, not that goddamn Bud Putai. I also felt Richard could have been turned into a meaner character with build of frustration that has been building up inside of him, just waiting to, waiting to release it. Overall, I don't recommend Dirty White Boys, as it's a very disappointing thriller that could have been so much more. While it has its moments but feels very tamed in places, along with unwanted filler, I'm sure you can find a better novels out there than this one. And that's it for this um, update review. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, this is uh, one book I really wish it could have been so much better. Like, the beginning part gets off to a great start. The second act is where it kind of starts to go downhill. And then towards the third and final act is when the whole thing just goes downhill. It turns into your uh, typical crime filler where the lawman has to beat the criminal character. And as I said, I hate it when I see the more interesting characters are killed off. And the ones that win are the, the basic plain characters that nobody really cares about. Um... There are parts in Dirty White Boys I really do like. Um, the, like like I, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, the shower fight scene is brutal. And then later on, the, the, the shootout in the Danny's restaurant is another really good part in it, too. Um, and the other thing I really like about this story is that when Lamar uses his fist, it doesn't say he punches him with his fist. Like, um, his fists uh, have the, like, the words, fuck you, tattooed on his knuckles. So whenever he uses one of these fists... He, the author just puts in the words, you know, what fist is being used, and that I really liked, and I have never seen any any author do this in a story. I thought they, other authors should do this. They should like, you know, have like a like a like a character of some kind, and they got like a t like a word tattoo on their fist, and every time they, they use that fist, the, the word the word that's tattooed on the knuckles is what what is what you read, and you know what fist is being used. That that I would like to see more of. Um, I also felt the Richard character could have been. Um, done a lot better too like I feel like this is a character that's kind of like um, pushed it's, it's, it's tired of being pushed around it has like a lot of built up anger and frustration and that he wants to let out and I would, would have liked it too if the author uh, had had Lamar making him a more tougher meaner character and letting him vent out his frustration that I would have liked to see too um and I, and I just felt the whole the whole final act could have been done so much better if the author killed off Bud Putai I really hate that character a lot. I don't like him. I don't even like his name. And um, there's a part in the book where he's putting on his uniform and he's like, oh, I, I feel so proud to be part of this uh, elite police society. I'm like, oh, I don't give a shit what, what you think, bud, at all. Um, there are a lot of other characters I don't like in this book. Uh, the Sex Crazed Holly character is annoying. Um, the Stefford couple is also annoying in that Lieutenant C.D. Henderson, oh my goodness, uh, I couldn't stand that character. I was so uh, now he, his character gets killed off, but not Bud Putai, of course. Oh, I just wish the author got rid of this character and just focused the story more on Lamar and his game. That would have made it so much better. And another thing I found it was a bit annoying is that when I was doing some further, uh, when I was um, doing some further research on the book and I was adding some other student hunter books to the list, I discovered that um, Bud Putai makes a kind of cameo appearance in the in the Bobby Lee Slager series, and I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. This guy makes an appearance in those, in the later books? Like, come on, why is this character gotta be in, in, in the books? I don't want, I don't want anything to do with Bud Putai. I just don't like his character. I want, I just keep him out, 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 out of the other story. I'm not kind of a, a fan of, um, offers or, or, yeah, offers when they when they decide to put in other characters into other books. I am not really a fan, fan of that. I like when characters are kind of in their own uh, universe and stuff. Um, some may find it neat. Me, eh, not really. Uh, but other than that, this was 
kind of a decent re like like I said the beginning part is excellent it's just the later half I don't like um but despite that I'll still hate on to this book as it it, it, it does have things that I, I I haven't seen in other um crime and action books so I'll still hate on to this book um there was even a one hardcover edition I was kind of um, I liked because there's two different hardcover editions. There's one with with like a fingerprint, and I don't like that. Then there was um, another edition which has like a car with it's been like riddled with bullet holes. I thought, you know what? That probably the, uh, the other edition I would get just to have that other edition. That's it for the updated review. I hope you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to uh, subscribe to Octar Library, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group of the same name. Please support your review of fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later.